we're going to start talking about astronomical concepts. As I said, astronomy is fundamental to Vedic astrology. An astrological chart is nothing but a picture of the sky at the time of a person's birth. So to understand what is represented in the astrological chart, we need to understand how the different astronomical concepts are uh, shown in the astrology chart. And that will help you visualize what the chart is trying to tell you or what the chart is trying to show you about the sky at the, at the time of the person's birth. So again, I uh, start with the uh, Jantar Mantar. We don't need telescopes. We don't need computers. We don't need uh, any, any kind of um, technological to do Vedic astrology. The ancient astrologers did very fine work with nothing but instruments like this. Why? How could they do that? Uh, because they understood the purpose or the, uh, I should say, they understood the, uh, the mechanism of how the planets in the sky work. And so they had a conception, they had an image in their minds that when they saw the chart, it would remind them of how the sky actually looked at that time. Okay, how is this done? Well, it turns out astronomy is a very highly developed subject in the Vedic culture. And with instruments like Jantar Mantar, and we can only imagine uh, what instruments must have existed that are now uh, ruined and we can't see how they worked. Uh, actually, the Jantar Mantar itself required additional instruments, especially you see these rails on the side, huh? and you see these rings on both sides. Well, there were additional instruments that were placed on those things, mirrors and so on, that would reflect the light of certain stars. And then people would go up this central stairway, uh, or they would go up the side stairways, and put other instruments on the scales on the side. And that's how they measured the actual position of the stars and planets. They could uh, make a distinction of uh, just a fraction of a minute of arc, a few seconds of time in the position of the planets or the, or the moon or stars or sun. Those instruments were kept, you see these doors? The instruments were kept inside these chambers and they were brought out and placed on the, uh, on the different scales at night and used to make observations. It's not that this thing was just a piece of stone and people would try to, you know, sight along it or something like that. No, they had other pieces made of metal, like similar to astrolabes or sextants and stuff like that. So it was a very developed technology. However, their technology of astronomy and astrology was based on a geocentric conception. And now we go to the next slide. Geocentric conception of reality. Geocentric means centered on the earth. As you can see in this drawing, the earth is at the center. Here's Africa, here's Asia, here's India right here. Huh? Europe is up there, Australia is down here, Malaysia, China. Huh? So the earth is in the middle and then these bands around the outside are the different planets orbits. And then finally, all the way on the outside, these are the different uh, astrological constellations. There's Gemini, Cancer, Aries, a Taurus, sorry, Aries, and then Pisces will be over here. It's hard to see. This is a very old drawing, very old manuscript. And here's the moon over here. So we can see that the ancients had a view of reality which was centered on the earth. 
Well, you might say they, didn't, they were ignorant. They didn't know that the earth actually goes around the sun. But that's not true. If we re read in the Vedas, it's mentioned specifically that the earth moves around the sun. So why is Vedic astronomy geocentric? Simply because that's where we are located. We're not located on the sun. We're located on the earth. And when we make astro astronomical observations, we're doing it from the point of view of the surface of the earth. So it doesn't make any sense to calculate astronomy based on the sun or some other point. It makes sense to look at it from the point of view of the earth because that's where we are. So what does that mean? That means we have in Vedic astrology a set of coordinates that's based on the surface of the earth. Okay, let's look at a, a drawing of the earth. It's a cutaway view actually of a sphere. It says here, the reference surface is a sphere. So if we have, a, let's say we have a sphere, a ball, and then it has these lines inscribed in it. First is the equator that goes around the middle, the North Pole, and the South Pole is down here, which you can't see because it's on the back. And then we have the Greenwich Meridian. What is the Greenwich Meridian? Well, every coordinate system has a zero point. This is called the origin. In our coordinate system of position on the surface of the Earth, the zero point is Greenwich, England. Uh, when the English were a very important uh, government on the Earth, they declared, okay, our observatory in Greenwich is the center of the world. <laughs> Everything is measured compared to that. So they were a little arrogant, but oh well. Uh, so the Greenwich Meridian is zero degrees longitude. Longitude is the distance east and west along the equator. Each of these vertical lines is a line of longitude. Similarly, we also have latitude. Latitude is the distance from the equator. See? Here's the equator is zero degrees latitude. Then there's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 degrees latitude is the North Pole. Similarly, the Greenwich Meridian is zero degrees longitude. And from Greenwich, 10 degrees west, 20 degrees west, 30 degrees west, or 10, 20, 30 degrees, 40 degrees east is longitude. Why is this important? Because we measure positions in the sky based on the positions in the earth. In other words, it's as if we took these lines measuring the latitude and longitude on the surface of the earth and we project them out into the sky and we use the same coordinates to measure the uh, position of a planet or star. Let's say there's a star here. Huh? P is the star. Right? So we say, okay, first of all, what is the angular distance from the Greenwich Meridian to the meridian where the star is located? Huh? That's going to be the longitude or the right ascension of the star. And then we say, okay, what is the, uh, the latitude or the height of the star above the equator? And that is called the azimuth of the star. Okay, azimuth, A-Z-I-M-U-T-H, azimuth. The other one's called? Right ascension. Yeah, but really those are just the same as latitude and longitude. Okay, 
Latitude and longitude become azimuth and right ascension in astronomy. And all it is is the same grid projected straight up from the earth onto the sky. Okay? So that's called the polar equatorial coordinate system. Why am I telling you this? Because there's another one <laughs> based on the ecliptic.